Welcome to this video, the gaming test of the RJ Phone 8, not the Pro version or the Pro Edition version. Yes, it's a two different thing. Uh, we will release the video for the RJ Phone 8 Pro Edition gaming test video at the top right corner here or down in the description below. The performance of these two phones are going to be identical. Uh, I just want to show you guys the gaming performance because a lot of people do not believe us when we say the Pro will have the same performance as the non-Pro version. And this time, thanks to ASUS Malaysia for sending us these two phones, I can finally show you that they are both having the exact same performance. So, same specs as well. Uh, the storage is a bit smaller, but it's still running the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. So let me just show you right here. As you can see, SOC Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. I'll zoom it in for you guys so you can see it clearer. Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. And then for the amount of RAM, this is less because it's the non-pro version. So we get 12 gigs of RAM. Still plentiful, honestly speaking. And uh, the amount of storage is 256 gigs, whereby for this pro edition is at 1 terabyte and 24 gigs of RAM. That's not going to matter because you can watch our video at the top right corner there to know why the amount of RAM is just, when it gets above a certain level, it's just wasting resources. And as for the screen, it's still this resolution, 1200 by 1080 and at 165 hertz refresh rate. I'm not sure why they're showing 120 here, but uh, then we can see refresh rate is at a maximum of 165 hertz. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to do the gaming test. So Genshin Impact first. Okay, so just like the Pro Edition, I'm gonna do this. Real-time info is already enabled and this time it is in X mode. So we have this FPS meter at the top here. We can see the CPU, GPU utilization alongside the temperature and also the FPS number which is at 61. And now we will just do more or less the same things as the RG Phone 8 Pro. So we'll walk around, do some quests, do some domains and see how things go. And I should also show you that we are running at the absolute highest graphical settings at 60 FPS. Just to show you guys again, everything is indeed at the highest. Oh, this is... No, I'm not going to turn on motion blur. It's a really trash feature. Then visual quality. And yeah, everything is at the absolute highest except for motion blur, which I hate. So let's just walk around outdoors. So let's just walk around. This is my exploration team right now. I need to level up some of the friendship for these characters. So that's why I'm using all of these characters, even though their level is like 40, 20. Yeah. Okay, I, I forgot to use the air triggers. So air triggers, they are exactly the same as the pro version as well. So turn that on. L, I just want it to be attacked. This one is skill, which is this one. And the air trigger features are identical as well. We can use it in dual partition mode or just turn it off entirely. And then we still have motion control, which again, I'm not going to use because it's kind of disorienting and the cooler. So yes, we do have the cooler from the ROG Phone 8 Pro Edition and we do have a dedicated video about this cooler coming soon. I will link it down in the description below as well. Once again, the CPU and GPU utilization is always below 100%. It's far from 100% actually. So the frame rate is very, very consistent at 61, which I think it's a rounded up number, but yeah, it's 60 FPS very consistently. And of course, it's even more consistent than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So no surprises there, right? Oh god, I didn't die. Busted. 
So yeah, overworld exploration, I don't think it's gonna be any issue. It's gonna perform the same as the ROG Phone 8 Pro. Yeah, this is the non-pro version. Where's the last enemy? Oh, why are you so far away? While we're here, let's do some quests. Side quests. Story quests? Nah, it's just event quests. Where else? I can't see. No, literally, where else? Yep, that's a distraction, so let's do this real quick as well. Where? I really hate mobile controls on this game. Seriously, they need to have controller support for this game on Android real soon. Okay, so there we go, we're done with this and let me claim this and now we should go to some domain and farm. Actually, I'm farming the uh, this domain. I don't know what's the domain called but uh, yeah, I'm farming this domain. So I the team I'm using, I have two teams that I can use here. So it's either a lower damage but less twitchy kind of gaming experience which is this one. Uh, I'm still testing either with uh, Diona or Mika but uh, I'm leaning towards this team a bit more. But uh, you know what, I'll just go with Raiden team. So this team is gonna be real simple for me. Oblivion! <laughs> <laughs> 
That's one round done, and as we can see, no frame drops, so that's really good. Uh, okay. Mm. Mm. And now let's go for round two. There we go! That's two rounds done. And we get some trash artifacts. So we'll change our team to this team because I just wanna show you one more boss that this phone doesn't have any frame rolls at all and it performs the same as the ROG Phone 8 Pro Edition. What I'm gonna do is to use this team and fight this, this gravity machine thing. Last cannon build. Ah, that's unfortunate. Anyway, we still got it within like nearly one rotation, but not quite. Uh, and yeah, no frame drops at all. 60 FPS consistent. And now let's go back to the city and take the temperature. So let's take a look at the temperature now. At the bottom side, it's gonna be around 40 degrees Celsius. And around the middle here is where the hottest is gonna be, around 41 degrees Celsius. 41 plus plus, not really that hot, I would say. Yeah, and at the top here is at around 37 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now what about the back of the phone? Uh, this is gonna be a bit more warm, I guess. I can actually feel the phone getting, you know, the warming sensation that it kind of rolls my fingers. So 40 degrees Celsius, somewhere below the camera bump. And around the middle here is at around 41.5 and it's constantly fluctuating, not too bad. And then around the RGB logo at the bottom here is around 35.5, somewhere around there. Not really that warm, but again, because the game Genshin Impact cannot stress the phone to its maximum potential, I will be taking another temperature later down the line when we test War Thunder. But now we'll move on to PUBG Mobile. So for PUBG Mobile, again, this game is just very, very, very bad in terms of optimization. So graphical quality that we have, HDR Extreme, that's it, which means 60fps. And uh, yeah, these are all of the settings that I'm going to use.
not really the best landing spot, but okay. So yeah, PUBG Mobile, not an issue for this phone at all, 60fps, no surprise right? Seriously, PUBG Mobile, you need to buck up in terms of all of the game settings available, even COD Mobile is doing a lot better, even PUBG New State is doing a whole lot better than this. You know what, I'm gonna skip forward, I'm not gonna play PUBG Mobile anymore. Now let's move on to PUBG New State. This game is a lot better compared to PUBG Mobile. So let me show you why. Anyway, PUBG New State, as we can see here, 90 FPS option, graphical quality at ultra. I still don't have extreme, but uh, let me complete the download for the HD textures because we are definitely using that. And these are all of the other settings we're using. Vulkan API of everything. So okay, we just use that. Download is gonna complete any second now. And there we go, so we just use all of these settings and let's hop into a game real quick. For this game in particular, the X mode is not even enabled by default. Let me just enable that real quick. Actually, I don't think we'll need it, but let's just do it. Then for air triggers, as usual, right side will be for aiming. Left side will be for shooting. What? Okay, the game crashed. That's unexpected. Yeah, I'm the last one to jump down. Okay. Yeah, PUBG New State not gonna be an issue for this phone as well. As we can see, no frame drops at all. Uh, 89, 90, not gonna be an issue. I really like this kind of triggers if we are playing shooter games. It's just fast in terms of response. But I still prefer physical triggers like the Black Shark series. But uh, R.A.P. Black Shark. Where? How do I get out of the car? Yeah, not gonna be an issue. So let's move on to COD Mobile. Yeah, so this is COD Mobile and uh, this game has been updated to support quite a lot of things. So um, if we want high frame rate, ultra frame rate more like, which is 120 FPS, then we have to go to medium quality. I'm okay with that. 
and these are all of the settings that I'm using. Technically just turning on whatever I can except for this one. Variable refresh rate is gonna it, it's gonna how do I say this? The not so important parts will not be rendered at such a high resolution or high fidelity. But uh, this phone can handle it. I'm just gonna turn this off. Super resolution turn high because the render resolution is tied to super resolution as well. Then optical performance on scope. Uh, this is more like to render it to become more realistic. I'm leaving that on. So let's hop into a game of multiplayer. Why is this not working? Oh my god, this is... Yeah, I mean, yeah, the entire gameplay uh, of COD Mobile not gonna be an issue for this phone, 120 FPS consistently. So nothing much to talk about. It's just that the A trigger seems to be not that reliable. It kind of skips back and forth a little bit. Sometimes it doesn't register, sometimes it does. And it doesn't hold that well as well. So yeah, I'm not sure what's happening. So we'll just proceed with another game which is Fortnite. I just want to show you how well this game performs on this phone. But uh, there is some graphical setting weirdness to this game as well. So for Fortnite, we have 90 FPS, but uh, the quality preset is going to be at high. If I set it to Epic, unfortunately it's going to drop back to 90 FPS, but I want it to be 90, so I just use this setting. Apply, there we go. I'm not really sure what's all these modes. I'm just gonna go for the classic battle royale. So yeah, the frame rate now is uh, jumping quite a bit, but uh, we can see it's at around 80, 70, somewhere around there. So let's just jump down real quick and see where things go. How do I jump? Jump.
Yeah, once we have landed, it's consistently at 90 FPS. Mm -hmm. The frame rate is definitely not consistent at 90, but uh, it fluctuates around that. Let's just drive around. Is this a Lamborghini or what? Hello, someone is here. How do I get out of the car? Hello? Okay. Who's shooting? The auto aim in this game is insane for mobile players. It's like Fortnite on easy mode. I mean, even though the frame rate fluctuates a lot, it's still very, very smooth. Where does this train go? I don't know. I can't get on the train. So yeah, this is Fortnite, really smooth overall and no problems if you want to play Fortnite using the ROG phone 8 base version. So let's go on with uh, one more game here. So for Mobile Legends, it is a bit weird. As you can see, we cannot even enable Ultra or the Super frame rate, which was found on the ROG phone 8 Pro. And that is because the Mobile Legends game was pre-installed on this phone. I think it's a different version from what we have on the Google Play Store. So yeah, this is what we're gonna work with. I don't know why we cannot turn on Ultra graphics, so that's disappointing, but it's just gonna be 60 FPS throughout. We, we just do a quick try. Yeah, this phone not gonna be an issue for Mobile Legends. It's not really a demanding game to begin with and definitely with such low graphical settings. I would consider the high graphical settings to be not the highest here because there's still another Ultra that we cannot turn on. And yeah, this phone is obviously gonna handle it with no issues. Whoa. Oh good. So yeah, I'm not gonna proceed with Mobile Legends any longer. It's not gonna have any issues playing this game at 60 FPS because the settings is just 
quite disappointing. I cannot go ultra, which is sad. But uh, yeah, at these settings, no problems at all. So for the last game, I did download three of them. Arena Breakout, Karak Street, War Thunder. All of these are said to be having ray tracing, but for whatever reason, these two games, the ray tracing just does not work. It's not there at all. Only War Thunder has it. So I'm going to be using War Thunder for ray tracing tests. And this is the true test in terms of performance. So for War Thunder, this is what we're going to do. And as you can see here, for this game, we do have all of these options, maximum 120 FPS frame rate, including ray tracing at high. I will include some screenshots for you to see what's the difference between off, medium and high. Personally speaking, not that much, I would say. It's still pretty underutilized. So let's start the game. And uh, let's just turn on X mode. That will improve the performance by quite a lot, actually. So as we can see, we instantly jump up to around 60 something FPS, nearly 70. I don't know what to do because I'm, I'm really unfamiliar with this game. Oh my god. I guess I'm expecting the tank to drift, but it's definitely not gonna drift. So let's go here. Hopefully I can get to the objective. God, I hate this tank movement. I can't even find the enemies. Where are they? Okay, victory! I don't know what I did there, but I think I contributed. And the frame rate, we can only get around 60 FPS with this high, super high settings. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take the temperature again because for this game in particular, it's very, very, very demanding. So let me just boot up our thermal cam. And we can see the temperature, front, bottom side, 40 degrees Celsius, around the middle part here. It's gonna be the hottest ever at yeah, around 43 degrees Celsius. I just saw that at 43, but it does fluctuate quite a lot. So take it to be around 43 degrees Celsius. And at the front here, the top around the selfie camera is around 38 degrees Celsius, 38 point something. What about the back? It's at around 42.1 degrees Celsius at the back. What about the middle part here? It's gonna be around 42 as well. Then at the back is around 36 point something. So yeah, that's the entire gaming test of the ROG Phone 8 non-pro version. And I, yeah, as we can see here, the performance of the ROG Phone 8 Pro and the non-pro version is going to have the same level of performance. Just to show you, this is not a fake phone. Yeah. They are both real. And I've tested the gaming test of the Pro as well, link at the top right corner there or down in the description. And what we have just tested was the non-pro version in this grey color. I'm not sure what color is this, but it has a slash in the middle here and it's greyish. On camera, I think it looks a bit more white, but I think this color looks really clean. So yeah, that's the gaming test of the ROG Phone 8 non-pro version. And if you want to watch the unboxing for this, then link at the description down below as well. As for the review for this cooler, it will come soon and I will also link it down in the description. There will be a whole playlist 
and a further comparison between these two phones will come as well. So do subscribe for all of those videos and we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.